Well, that was the best introduction I think I've ever had. Thanks so much to our Lion Brothers Jabari and Kwame for providing the type of opening you'll only see here at this very special event. For those of you who didn't quite understand what our lions were saying, my name is Ron McGill, and I want to welcome you to the first ever virtual Feast with the Beasts at Zoo Miami. Normally on this night, the zoo is filled with close to a thousand people attending what is arguably the best wild party in South Florida. But as you can see, tonight it's just me, all dressed up, feeling lonely, and quite frankly, a bit strange. You see, like so many other events, this, our most important fundraising event of the year, has been moved from in-person to virtual due to COVID-19. Now more than ever, your support is vital to our success. Like so many other institutions, Zoo Miami is facing tremendous challenges as we try to make up for the millions of dollars lost due to our closure over the last several months, which was necessary in an effort to keep everyone safe. So what we've done is put together a very special program that you can watch in the comfort of your home, hopefully with a nice drink and some good food, while still feeling connected to this amazing place. Tonight, I want to share with you some small glimpses of what makes Zoo Miami a true community treasure. To help inspire you, we'll also have special appearances by Gloria Stefan, Shaquille O'Neal, Casey of Casey and the Sunshine Band, ESPN's Dan Lebertard, and the hilarious Dave Barry. In addition, we'll have a very special musical performance by Latin Grammy award-winning artist, Nestor Torres. Feast with the Beast is now in its 24th year and owes its success to its many generous sponsors. Tonight, we give special thanks to ZMF board director, Kathy McDonald and Assurant, who served as the title sponsor for the fourth consecutive year. Zoo Miami Foundation acknowledges Assurant's support with its Champions of Conservation Award that is also presented to the Jose Milton Foundation, Florida Power and Light, and a generous new sponsor, First Horizon Bank. Their generosity, along with many other sponsors, have made it possible to raise more than a million dollars over the years to help support the care and enrichment of thousands of animals, as well as the development and implementation of innovative education programs, which instill a passion for wildlife and its conservation for the future. Now, here are some of the ways that you can help support our efforts tonight. Our silent auction has a wide variety of items, including some wonderful experiences that have been created just for tonight's event, such as a personalized virtual meet and greet with one of a variety of animals, or the opportunity to name a flamingo chick. Please visit the silent auction website by clicking the button below to get a full list. Bidding closes at 11 p.m. tonight. You can also go to the online gift shop to adopt an animal. Now, you don't get to take the animal home, but you do get a wonderful package that includes a cuddly representation of your animal, like this little guy. Or you can simply choose the Donate Now button and make a generous contribution. Now I know that you haven't tuned in tonight to see my talking head and my feeble attempt to bring some class to this event with this tux. So without further ado, let's start the program that we're all here to see. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Feast with the Beasts 2020. That's just a small look at some of the amazing residents that call Zoo Miami home. I was lucky to capture those images in preparation for tonight, and every time I see that closing clip of Barney, or silverback gorilla, looking over his shoulder at me, I remember the feeling of awe I felt looking through the camera when it happened. There's a magic that occurs when you have the privilege of looking into the eyes of a magnificent animal like that, that I wish everyone could experience, if only for a moment. Tonight's your opportunity to help us help them, so I hope that you can support us in any way that you can. And now, to help kick off the evening and hopefully inspire you to support our efforts, it's my great privilege to introduce to you a wonderful friend of Zoo Miami, who also happens to be a musical legend and Miami royalty. Here are a few words from the beautiful and iconic 
Gloria Stefan. Hi, thank you, Ron. You know, we are so proud to call Miami home and one of its special treasures is definitely Zoo Miami, where we've been able to go with our family and friends, including our kids. Now you've been Emily and our grandson Sasha, you've been with us making our visit so incredible and enjoying the beauty of wildlife while learning the importance of protecting it for the future. So anybody that's watching this, please join us in supporting this very special place in any way you can. And most importantly, be safe and stay healthy. Thank you so much, Gloria. For 40 years, Zoo Miami, originally Miami Metro Zoo, has been providing windows into the world of wildlife that have inspired millions of visitors. I'm extremely lucky to have worked here for that entire time, and I've been privileged to get to know so many of the amazing animals that have called it home, as well as experience some of the memorable events, both happy and sad, that have occurred throughout the years. From starting as a zookeeper at the old Cranon Park Zoo on Key Biscayne, to being able to establish the Ron McGill Conservation Endowment here at the Zoo Miami Foundation, it has been a wild ride. I was asked to put together a short synopsis of that ride to help showcase to you some of the many things that make Zoo Miami an invaluable treasure for anyone who cares about wildlife and its conservation. Using a tiny fraction of the thousands of images I've been able to capture over the years, here's a glimpse at what I've been privileged to experience. Forty years, wow. It's so true when they say that time flies when you're having fun. It was emotional putting that together and an impactful reminder of how incredibly lucky I've been to be at this special place for this long and to share its wonderful stories with people around the world. 
It was also a sad reminder of how much hair I used to have. Whew. Now, here's another good friend of the zoo whose hilarious views on everyday life have entertained millions. Let's hear what best-selling author and syndicated humor columnist Dave Barry has to say. Thank you, Ron McGill. I'm a big fan of Zoo Miami. My family and I are members. We go there all the time. We love the zoo. And we love Ron McGill. What an incredible guy. What an animal lover. Nobody loves animals more than Ron McGill does, to the point where a number of the giraffes have taken out restraining orders on him. But we're not here to talk about Ron's personal life. We're here to talk about Zoo Miami, the Zoo Miami Foundation. Please give. It's a wonderful cause. We promise you the money will be used for the animals and not for Ron's legal fees. So thanks. Back to you, Ron. Thanks, Dave. I think. Of course, the real stars of the zoo are the animals. Since you can't be here to see them in person right now, we thought that through this virtual event, we would bring some of them to you, along with some of their keepers, to give you the inside scoop of what it's like to work with them behind the scenes. So here's our first close-up with the world's tallest land animal and zookeeper Nick Potratz, brought to you by LNR Structural Corporation. Hey, I'm Nick, a keeper here at Zoo Miami. I take care of the, the giraffe. We got three boys, three girls. We got Pongo, Blizzard, Malcolm, Mia, Sabra, and Zuri. They're all reticulated giraffe, except for Mia. Mia is a subspecies of northern giraffe. One of the interesting things about giraffe is their necks. People think there would be a lot more bones in their necks, but they actually have the same amount of bones in their neck as we do, seven vertebrae. They're just about a foot long each, so a lot longer. They need to be taller to eat those higher leaves and branches that none of the other animals can get to. We do training with the giraffe, so we use a shoot system and it's all positive for them, just in case we need to do any sort of medical procedure like blood draws, vaccinations. We get weights on them in there if we need to do x-rays, laser therapy, anything medical we need to do. We bring them into the chute and we'll train them in there. The pattern on a giraffe is all unique to an individual. It's like our fingerprint. People will ask me like, how do you tell them apart? So their, their spots are different. You can look at one. I mean, obviously, they're, some are skinnier, some are a little wider. They each have different body type, but what's distinctive between each one is their pattern is always different. So we have a few, few females that might be pregnant right now. Gestation for a giraffe, they'll carry their baby for about 15 months. When they have it, they're usually around six feet tall. We've had some weigh, you know, on the lighter side, 100 pounds. The heavier side has been like 180 pounds. So these giraffe are pretty docile with their temperament. They all have their own personality. And their main defense is kicking. Actually, what a mother will do to protect her calf is tuck it right underneath of them. And giraffe can kick out with their front legs forward, back legs forward. They can use their back legs to the side. And that's their, their main form of protection. We look forward to seeing you guys here so you can see these beautiful animals for yourself. Thanks so much, Nick. Some of our more popular characters at the zoo are Ellie, Kaz, and Gigi of the Zoo Squad. So, in an effort to be cool and in step with the times, here's a dance video featuring our lovable mascots, along with some of our great young volunteers, in front of our T-Rex that's here as part of our Dinosaurs Live exhibit. Wow, I wish I was that limber again. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I was never that limber. I pulled some muscles just watching that. Great job, kids. One of the areas that is behind the scenes at the zoo and is rarely seen by the public, but is certainly one of, if not the most important facility here, is the animal hospital. Over the years, much of the hospital has become dated and worn down. There's a huge need for renovation and expansion to bring it back to the world-class facility that it needs to be 
in order to provide the very best care for the thousands of animals that live here. One of the main goals of this year's Feast with the Beasts is to raise funds for a new hospital that will bring Zoo Miami to a truly elite level when it comes to animal health care. Here's a look into some of the amazing work done at the Zoo Hospital with our Chief of Animal Health, Dr. Gwen Myers. Thanks, Ron. We have an incredible team here at the zoo that is passionate about what they do to ensure the animals living here receive the best care possible. Though I could go on and on about the work we do, I think it would be better for you to see some of it for yourself. So here is a glimpse of what life is like behind the scenes of the Zoo Miami Animal Health Department. As you just saw, we are deeply committed and profoundly dedicated to providing our animals with everything they need to live long, healthy lives. However, this hospital has become outdated and it is in desperate need of renovation. With your support, we hope to build a new state-of-the-art hospital that will enable us to be a leader in the field of zoo medicine so that our animals can receive the care that they deserve. We greatly appreciate anything that you could do to help us reach that goal. Thank you. Thanks, Gwen. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes at the zoo, especially at the hospital. As Dr. Meyer said, we need your help to continue to provide the very best care for the animals that have been entrusted to us. I want to remind you to bid on some of the many wonderful items that are available in our silent auction, 
like this incredible commemorative of the late Kobe Bryant with his original signature. Another great way to support Zoo Miami is to become a member. There are several levels of membership that offer a wide variety of benefits and will allow you to get the very best out of what the zoo has to offer. Here is zoo member Chanel Segura to share her feelings on why a zoo membership is so beneficial. I'm a member of Zoo Miami because bringing my family here is refreshing and such a fun thing to do during the week or on the weekends. Our favorite thing to do at the zoo has to be feeding the giraffes and the rhinos. I'll never forget the first time we fed the rhino, how scared we all were, but it's one of our favorite things to do now. Our favorite memory has to be when our first son was born, bringing him to the splash pad. We'd wake up really early, come right when it opens, take him to the splash pad, have lunch, nap time, and then we'd head home. It's the best. Everyone should be a member of the zoo, especially if you live in Miami, because aside from the affordable price, you can come all day long. You can come in the morning. If you have kids, take them home for a nap, come back in the afternoons, all year round. Bring your grandparents, bring your cousins. It's just a nice outing with the family, or even alone if you want to just do a stroll and see the animals during the day. Thanks, Chanel. In addition to general memberships, there is also a young professionals group called the Wild Bunch that participates in a variety of activities to support special projects at the zoo. Here's Brittany Bassan to tell you why she's a member. I'm a member of Wild Bunch because I love Zoo Miami and I've always wanted a way to engage on a deeper level with the zoo to use my skills and talents as a young professional to help support Zoo Miami's foundation's mission of education and conservation both locally and abroad. If you're a young professional and you're looking to engage with another group of like-minded young professionals, again, with a passion for animals, with a passion for education, with a passion for conservation, Wild Bunch is definitely the place for you. And of course, Zoo Miami's in our backyard and it's a local gem here in our community, so anything that we can do to support it's really helpful. Zoo Miami is incredible. It's not just an attraction. It goes beyond just being an attraction. It's not just a place to come see animals, but again, they, they foster such an incredible mission of conservation and education throughout our community. It's very important that we support that. I think the biggest thing is just to make sure that you keep supporting our local organizations. Zoo Miami is one of them, and Zoo Miami supports other local organizations, works in partnership with other local organizations. During this time, it's really important for us to come together and do everything possible to support our local not -for profits to make sure that they can continue to provide their mission of, again, Zoo Miami caring for the animals, conservation, education, and just being a place that families can come together once this is all over. Thanks, Brittany. And now, here are a few words from another musical icon whose songs were a part of the soundtrack of my younger years and still resonate today. So put on your boogie shoes, shake your booty, and let's get down tonight as we hear some words from the man himself, KC of KC and the Sunshine Band. Hey Ron, it's good to be with all of you this evening. Uh, hopefully to encourage you to help support Zoo Miami as it is a real treasure here in our community. So click on the address below, give what you can. The animals and I would appreciate it. Be safe and be healthy. Oh, oh, thanks, Casey. Got some great memories to those songs, if you know what I mean. One of the primary goals of Zoo Miami is to educate and inspire. Our learning experiences department develops and delivers a variety of education programs designed to empower the next generation of wildlife heroes. Here's our Director of Learning Experiences, Jessica Parks, with a look at some of those programs. Hi, my name is Jessica and I'm the Director of Learning Experiences here at the Zoo Miami Foundation. Thanks to the support of our donors, we have been able to impact over 600,000 people, which is an amazing feat. And we thank you so much for helping us do that. We did that through our Zoo Camp program where we build wildlife warriors out of kids. And your donations goes towards scholarships where kids from low income families can join the Zoo Camp experience at no additional cost to the family. At our Animal Fun Factory, guests can take part in animal welfare where they can create enrichments for all sorts of animals here at Zoo Miami, such as this water jug that looks like a honey hive that's going to be going out to our American black bears, Libby and Laura, where they'll have a puzzle feeder and they just need to forage for their food. We have an amazing group of volunteers here at the foundation, over 300 in fact, and 
part of that group is high schoolers, where we empower them to be environmental stewards, and they get to learn about public speaking, customer service, and all other sorts of skills that will help them succeed in the future in whatever careers they choose. We can't forget our students, of course. Thanks to our donated Mercedes-Benz van from Mercedes-Benz of Coral Gables and Mercedes-Benz of Cutler Bay, we travel all across Miami-Dade and Broward County enriching science lessons at School Store Azuda U program. Mega here is eager to go see students once again this school year and is waiting for her ride. So thank you guys for supporting Zoo Miami Foundation. We couldn't do it without you and we look forward to providing fun educational programs to our community with your continued support. Thanks, Jessica. Zoo Miami could not do what it does without the invaluable contributions of our incredible volunteers. Many of those volunteers come from very successful professional careers and apply the experiences of those careers to making Zoo Miami the best that it can be. Here's volunteer Donna DePriest to share her feelings about being part of this very special group. I volunteer at Zoo Miami because in my heart, I think I'm a conservationist and I always have been. And I found a time in my life that I wanted to give back to my community. And I'm an educator as well. And for me, it's a natural fit because I love conservation, I love education, so I love talking to people about the zoo, the mission of the zoo, about conservation in general, and why it's important for everybody to be cognizant and concerned about what's happening in the world. And Zoo Miami is a perfect opportunity for me to talk to people about what I love. Places like Zoo Miami are so important because not only can we learn about the animals, we're protecting the animals. And at the same time, we can give the message that we need to protect the environment in general. It's not just about Zoo Miami, it's about the world. And kids and parents really need to understand that they are part of a global tribe and we need to do something now to protect our world. Children need to come to the zoo. Their families need to come to the zoo, not just to get away from the house and have a great day at the zoo, but to to learn about the animals, learn about conservation, learn about why preservation is important, and just learn about how they are so important in protecting this earth. Thanks, Donna. In addition to the adult volunteers, we're extremely fortunate to have a fantastic group of younger volunteers called our Conservation Teen Scientists. These high school students dedicate significant time serving as zoo ambassadors, providing information to our guests in a variety of ways. Here's CTS member Ryan Iglesias to tell you why being part of this organization is important to him. Ever since I was little, I would always see Steve Irwin on TV and his admiration and love for all these different types of animal species, big or small, predators or prey, is absolutely incredible. So as a conservation team scientist, I'm able to bring zoo visitors a little bit of that taste of the Steve Irwin experience to fall in love with these creatures and want to help protect them and conserve them out in the wild. I think that's a very important uh, part of my goal to help share with the others in the public. Well, honestly, CTS has so many opportunities for any new volunteer. If you're just entering high school or if you're in your junior year, it doesn't matter. It helps you open new avenues in life for if you want to be a major in uh, biology or zoology or if you want to be a communications major and practice your public speaking. There's so many different avenues you could go down through. And with a good cause like protecting animal species in the wild through wildlife conservation, not only are you getting valuable experience, but also providing a very, very important part of community service. Zoos are incredibly important because it's our last vanguard of protecting some of the most endangered species in the world. Some species are already long extinct in the wild, but at the zoos we're able to help breed them and conserve them. And by keeping the gene pool healthy and alive, we're preserving them for generations to come. Zoo Miami has such an integral role for our community because here in Miami, the majority of the animals that we might be able to see are mostly Everglades animals, so crocodiles, alligators, and snakes. But the chances of you seeing a tiger or a lion here are nil. So here you can admire the variety of nature from all over the world, Africa, Asia, the Middle East. It's just this incredible menagerie of wildlife that's unlike anything else. Well said, Ryan. As you can see, there are lots of great ways to get more involved with the zoo. Now here's another animal close-up, brought to you by Greenberg Trarig, with Trent Taylor and an iconic bird that's very pretty in pink. Hey everybody, my name is Trent. I'm one of the keepers here at Zoo Miami, and behind me we have our flock of American flamingos. Now, flamingos are pretty cool animals with a very unique way of eating. So these guys are filter feeders, and they are built just for that. And so what they do when they eat is they'll actually 
kick up some sediment, some algae, some small crustaceans, and they'll put their head almost upside down underwater and they'll open and close their mouth using their upper beak. They actually have these comb-like rows in their mouth that get the food stuck and it filters the water and keeps that from the food. So our flamingos are pretty much paired up one-on-one -on -one with a male and a female, but we actually do have a group that is one male and two females, and it's pretty cool this year. Uh, both females actually laid eggs. So the guy's putting in a lot of work, and what they're doing when you look at the nest is they try to build the nest as high as they can, and it's almost like the higher the nest, the better they, you know, makes them feel about themselves. And so what we did is we actually did help them out a little bit. We made a nest about a foot high, and then as you can see, some of them are a good three or four feet tall right now. So in our flock, the age ranges from some born in the 80s and one born last year. So we got a whole variety of them. And a lot of people are wondering how they get their color. So in the wild, they get their color from the small crustaceans, the brine shrimp, and also some blue-green algae that they'll eat. And here at the zoo, we have the special formulated pelleted diet that has the same carotenoids into their pellets. We hope to see you guys soon and welcome you guys back so you can see them yourselves. Thanks, Trent. Did you catch his line? So the guy is putting in a lot of work when he referred to the male flamingo that had paired up with two females this year? <laughs> now that was funny and impressive. Those who Miami is involved in a wide variety of international conservation projects from Africa to Panama. There's a special concentration by our conservation and research department on important conservation projects much closer to home. Here's Dr. Frank Ridgely, Director of our Conservation and Research Department, to tell us a little bit more about it. Thanks, Ron. Many people don't realize that Zoo Miami supports field conservation and research efforts around the world. But in addition to these global efforts, we don't want to forget about some very special imperiled species that exist right in our backyard here in South Florida. So we are committed to raising awareness, conducting research, and committing to conservation programs to help ensure their survival into the future. Flamingos used to be very common around the coastal areas of Florida in the 1800s, but they were nearly wiped out due to the plume trade and believe it or not, for food. We want this beautiful wading bird that has been somewhat forgotten in Florida's history brought back into its proper place and get back the protections that it deserves as a Florida native species. Other species like the gopher tortoise, which is imperiled throughout their range, weren't even really recognized as still existing in Miami until our efforts here have put them back on the map and we are learning how they are existing in this special ecosystem called the Pine Rockland, which actually surrounds the zoo. Many people also aren't aware that South Florida has more imperiled butterfly species than anywhere else. To aid in the recovery of these imperiled butterflies, we have built a special research facility here on zoo grounds that we affectionately call the Butterfly Bunker. Another unique species that calls South Florida home is the Florida Bonneted Bat. This is Florida's largest and most endangered bat. We have been extremely proactive in the conservation and advocacy for this species and have partnered with key organizations to provide a safe refuge throughout its range, even in the middle of the urban landscape of Miami. Most people have heard about the tremendous challenge South Florida faces concerning invasive species. There are now actually more introduced non-native species of reptiles living here than there are native ones. These non-native species become invasive when they negatively affect the natural environment by outcompeting native species, disturbing the delicate balance of an ecosystem. The poster child for invasive species is the Burmese python, which has led to the demise of many small mammal populations and poses a serious threat to native wading bird rookeries. Zoo Miami has worked hand in hand with local, state, and federal agencies to help control these invasive species. One of the ways we participate is by surgically implanting transponders in these intruders so that they can be tracked and in turn lead us to other individuals as we learn to better understand their behaviors in support of our efforts to reduce and control their populations. An animal that is not native to Florida, but has many strong connections to the Venezuelan community that lives here now, is the critically endangered red siskin. Commonly called the Cardinalito, this bird is iconic in the Venezuelan culture. 
We have partnered with the Smithsonian and the Red Siskin Initiative to become one of the first zoos in the United States to house Red Siskins, where they are actually successfully reproducing. In addition, we are supporting the construction of the very first Red Siskin Conservation Center in Venezuela through support with the Smithsonian, where they are receiving confiscated birds from the illegal wildlife trade and establishing a captive breeding and reintroduction program. These are just a few examples of the ongoing efforts being managed here by the Conservation Research Department here at the zoo. We would deeply appreciate any support you could lend to these efforts to help them continue and grow. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Now here are some words from a dear friend who gives me a weekly platform on his extremely popular national radio show, ESPN television and radio host, Dan Levertard. Gracias, Senor McGill. I am happy to be here on behalf of Zoo Miami and Ron McGill because the way that place and that person care about animals is super unusual. It is a deep abiding care that the animal kingdom deserves. And while I can tell you that, and maybe that means something to you, I think I can illustrate it to you better by telling you an absolutely true story about Ron McGill. He's a six foot six Cuban with that mustache, as you know. And he cares so much about the animals that the Sandhill Crane was having trouble procreating at one time. It's a big bird and it wasn't feeling intimacy. And so Ron McGill, aforementioned mustachioed six foot six Cuban, got in a bird costume. This is an absolutely true story and did a mating sexual dance for the bird and then squatted down so the bird can put in a tube in the back the insemination required to help the species procreate. I'm not making any of that up. They told me to keep this family friendly. That's as family friendly as I can keep it. And it's a pretty great example of how much this man in this place cares about the animals because who in God's name would ever sacrifice that much of their dignity in order to help the animals? Help him help the animals. Let's go, donate and don't be cheap. Thanks, Dan. I'm sure that you're sharing that personal story has made my children very proud of me. I don't know who approved that. Now, remember to go to our silent auction to bid on some of the amazing items we have here, like this frame signed portrait I was able to capture of our koala Rinnie and her Joey Hope. This is the first koala born at the zoo in over 20 years, and he has sure been a ray of hope for all of us. It's now my extreme pleasure and honor to introduce you to Latin Grammy Award winning artist Nestor Torres, who is backed by our Tiger Temple with some heartfelt words and a very special performance of the classic song, Over the Rainbow. Good evening and welcome. I am so delighted to be part of this wonderful event tonight, Feast with the Beast 2020. I am very proud to have a history with Metro Zoo, remember, <laughs> wow, Metro Zoo. Now it is uh, Zoo Miami, whereas we uh, performed in different jazz concerts. And actually when the aviary opened back in 1984, I was part of that opening dressed up as an elf. I shouldn't have said that in any case. The work and the mission of Zoo Miami is more relevant and urgent now than ever before. Because this situation, this pandemic we're going through is a consequence of the disharmony between humanity and nature. And Zoo Miami's mission in protecting and connecting us human beings with nature is absolutely essential if we are going to survive. See, there's something to be said about diversity, not just among ourselves, but between nature and, and us. It's so very much like the rainbow. You see, there's seven colors, each of them distinct, blending together harmoniously. That's what makes the rainbow so beautiful. Another thing that makes the rainbow so significant is that it appears not in spite, but precisely because of the clouds and the storms and the darkness. Sooner or later, the rays of the sun will pierce through those clouds, and that's when you get to see the rainbow. It is precisely at these dark, stormy, rainy times in which the time has come for us to bring forth that light from within. Just like the sun is always, uh, is always there, we too possess that sun within. Tonight, we have that opportunity to bring forth that light of hope from within by being part of this magical evening and keeping the mission of Zoo Miami going. Thank you so very much.
Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you so much, Nestor, for your inspiring words and passionate performance. I'm amazed at how you can create such magical music with your flute. We saved our last animal close-up of the evening for the largest land animal on Earth. Let's take a look at what it's like to care for an animal that can produce hundreds of pounds of poop a day with animal care manager Ryan Cotton, brought to you by Wells Fargo. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Ryan Cotton. I'm the animal care coordinator here at Zoo Miami for our elephant department. I'm out here at our African elephant uh, habitat and behind me we have Peggy as well as Miss Mabel, our two female African elephants. So every morning we load up our animals' diets. Our African elephants share about 200 pounds of hay a day. Now Peggy, our dominant, our matriarch African elephant, might get a little bit more than Miss Mabel, but these girls have been living together for 40 years, so they've learned how to um, work it out between the two of them as far as who gets all the food they need. Each week we weigh our elephants, and that's one way that we can monitor the weight to make sure that they are sharing that hay appropriately. Uh, and we take that information and we share it with our nutritionist here at the zoo, and she once again keeps an eye on how those numbers are adding up. One of the main questions that we get here at Zoo Miami is what is the difference between African elephants and Asian elephants? And the easiest way to tell the difference is if you take a look at those big old ears behind me. So African elephants have the largest ears of the two. If you use your imagination, they also uh, look like the shape of the continent of Africa. Now what is the purpose of those ears besides just helping them hear from a very great distance? Um, if you see, you can actually see those veins that run through those ears. When they whoosh those ears back and forth, the blood flowing through those veins circulate throughout the body of the elephant, keeping that blood nice and cool, again acting almost as the air conditioner for the elephant. Another question we get asked a lot about is their trunk. So that trunk is comprised of over 40,000 large muscle groups. It is gentle enough to pluck one piece of grass off the ground and it's strong enough to also rip a tree out of the ground as well. Another question we get asked about is why are our African elephants or even sometimes our Asian elephants different colors and they actually cover themselves in substrate. This is almost like elephant sunscreen if you will. They can cover themselves in dirt, sand, clay, mud and all of this helps cool off that skin and keep them protected from the sun as well as parasites or bugs as well. Another fun fact about elephants is they actually do not sweat like you or I do. The only spot that they have sweat glands is in between their toes. So foot care is very important when it comes to elephants. It's one of our most important husbandry behaviors that we have. In addition to meeting Miss Peggy and Mabel, we also look forward to having you guys join us back out the zoo for your chance to meet Dollop, Nelly, and Ongard, our Asian elephants. Once again, it was nice talking to you guys. We hope you learned something new, and we look forward to seeing you next time you're out here at the zoo. Thanks, Ryan. It only makes sense to come out of a segment on the biggest land animal on Earth and segue to the biggest human being I have ever met. Here are some words of wisdom from NBA legend and four-time world champion, the leader of the Miami Heat's first NBA championship, and someone who, along with his children, have enjoyed Zoo Miami many times, Shaquille O'Neal. Hey, Vic Ryan, I hope everyone in Miami is remaining safe. Me and my family have spent some special times at Zoo Miami. I always have a special love for that place. Like so many others, they're going through some tough times right now and can really use your support. So join me in helping them by going to the address on your screen and doing what you can. Be safe. Stay healthy. Thanks, Shaq. He is a mountain of a man. These are his shorts and a shoe that he gave me after the Heat won the first championship. Look how huge they are. This virtual Feast with the Beast would not have been possible without the leadership of its extraordinary benefit committee led by Alex Mendieta. Here's Alex with a few words. We can't wait to welcome you back in March of 2021. Here's a reminder of what Feast with the Beast looked like in 2019.
Well, that about does it for our first ever virtual Feast with the Beast. Please be sure to check out all the interactive rooms below by clicking on each experience. We have fun activities such as a mixology room sponsored by Bacardi, trivia room, chef demonstration, a fire dancer, and you can join me for an exclusive live Zoom VIP experience where I hope to have a couple of my wild friends. Also, please be on the lookout for our next virtual event in October, the Virtual Zoo Run 5K. In closing, I'd like to leave you with these personal comments. In a perfect world, we wouldn't need any zoos because in a perfect world, everyone would be able to see an elephant walking on the African plains, a tiger hunting in an Asian woodland, or a harpy eagle flying through a tropical forest. Unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world, and the windows that accredited zoos like Zoo Miami provide to visitors help connect them to wildlife and plant a seed that will hopefully grow into a passion for protecting that wildlife for future generations. There's an old saying that states, we protect what we love, we love what we understand, and we understand what we're taught. It's our responsibility to teach as many people as we can about our world's wildlife and help inspire them to hopefully love it. While the zoo's been closed for the past several months, I've spent some quiet, quality time with the beautiful animals that live here. And I've tried to capture images that speak much more effectively than my words. I've taken some of those images and produced the following video in hopes that it will remind you of what we're all fighting to protect. Because in the end, we've not inherited this earth from our parents. We're borrowing it from our children. I hope that you can help us in our mission. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe, stay healthy. Good night.